Brought to you by wikivd.com Vlad the Impaler Vlad III, known as Vlad the Impaler of Vlad Dracula, was voivode of Wallachia three times between 1448 and his death. He was the second son of Vlad Dracul who became the ruler of Wallachia in 1436. Vlad, and his younger brother Radu were held as hostages in the Ottoman Empire from 1442. To secure the father's loyalty, Vlad's father and eldest brother Misha, were murdered after John Hunyadi, regent governor of Hungary invaded Wallachia in 1447. Hunyadi installed Vlad's second cousin Vladislav I as the new voivode. Hunyadi launched a military campaign against the Ottomans in the autumn of 1448, and Vladislav accompanied him. Vlad broke into Wallachia with Ottoman support in October, but Vladislav returned and Vlad sought refuge in the Ottoman Empire before the end of the year. Vlad went to Moldavia in 1449 or 1450 and later to Hungary. He invaded Wallachia, with Hungarian support in 1456. Vladislav died fighting against him. Vlad began a purge among the Wallachian boyars to strengthen his position. He came into conflict, with the Transylvanian Saxons who supported his opponents Dan and Basarab Lyota, and Vlad's illegitimate half-brother Vlad the Monk. Vlad plundered the Saxon villages taking the captured people to Wallachia where he had them impaled. Peace was restored in 1460. The Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II ordered Vlad to pay homage to him personally. But Vlad had the Sultan's two envoys captured and impaled. In February 1462, he broke into Ottoman territory massacring tens of thousands of Turks and Bulgarians. Mehmed launched a campaign against Wallachia to replace Vlad with Vlad's younger brother Radu. Vlad attempted to capture the Sultan at Targo Vista during the night of 1617 June 1462. The Sultan and the main Ottoman army left Wallachia but more and more Wallachians deserted to Radu. Vlad went to Transylvania to seek assistance from Matthias Corvinus, King of Hungary in late 1462. But Corvinus had him imprisoned. Vlad was held in captivity in Visegrad from 1463 to 1475. During this period anecdotes about his cruelty started to spread in Germany and Italy. He was released at the request of Stephen III of Moldavia in the summer of 1475. He fought in Corvinus' army against the Ottomans in Bosnia in early 1476. Hungarian and Moldavian troops helped him to force Basarab Lyota to flee from Wallachia in November. Basarab returned with Ottoman support before the end of the year. Vlad was murdered before 10 January 1477. Books describing Vlad's cruel acts were among the first bestsellers in the German-speaking territories. In Russia popular stories suggested that Vlad was able to strengthen central government only through applying brutal punishments, and a similar view was adopted by most Romanian historians in the 19th century. Vlad's reputation for cruelty, and his patronymic inspired the name of the vampire Count Dracula in Bram Stoker's 1897 novel, Dracula. Name The expression Dracula which is now primarily known as the name of a mythological vampire, was for centuries known as the sobriquet of Vladi. Diplomatic reports and popular stories referred to him as Dracula 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 already in the 15th century. He himself signed his two letters as Dracula Dracula in the late 1470s. His name had its origin in the Romanian sobriquet of his father Vlad Dracul, who received it after he became a member of the Order of the Dragon. Dracula is the Slavonic genitive form of Dracul meaning the son of Dracul. In modern Romanian, Dracul means the devil which contributed to Vlad's bad reputation. Vlad III is known as Vladi P.E.S. in Romanian historiography. 
This sobriquet is connected to the impalement that was his favorite method of execution. The Ottoman writer Tursun Beg referred to him as around 1500. Misha the shepherd, voivode of Wallachia used this sobriquet when referring to Vlad III in a letter of Grant on 1 April 1551. Early life Vlad was the second legitimate son of Vlad II Dracul, who was an illegitimate son of Misha I of Wallachia, as he was old enough to be a candidate to the throne of Wallachia in 1448 his time of birth would have been between 1428 and 1431. Vlad was most probably born after his father settled in Transylvania in 1429. Historian Radu Florescu writes that Vlad was born in the Transylvanian Saxon town of Siashuara, where his father lived in a three-story stone house from 1431 to 1435. Modern historians identify Vlad's mother either as a daughter, or a kinswoman of Alexander I of Moldavia or as his father's unknown first wife. Vlad Dracul seized Wallachia after the death of his half-brother Alexander I Aldea in 1436. One of his charters preserved the first reference to Vlad and his elder brother Misha, mentioning them as their father's firstborn sons. They were mentioned in four further documents between 1437 and 1439. The last of the four charters also referred to their younger brother Radu. After a meeting with John Hunyadi Voivode of Transylvania, Vlad Dracul did not support an Ottoman invasion of Transylvania in March 1442. The Ottoman Sultan, Murad II ordered him to come to Gallipoli to demonstrate his loyalty. Vlad and Radu accompanied their father to the Ottoman Empire where they were all imprisoned. Vlad Dracul was released before the end of the year, but Vlad and Radu remained hostages. To secure his loyalty, they were held imprisoned in the fortress of Egregoz according to contemporaneous Ottoman chronicles. Their lives were especially in danger after their father supported Vladislaus, king of Poland and Hungary against the Ottoman Empire during the Crusade of Varna in 1444. Vlad Dracul was convinced that his two sons were butchered for the sake of Christian peace. But neither Vlad nor Radu was murdered and mutilated after their father's rebellion. Vlad Dracul again acknowledged the Sultan's suzerainty and promised to pay a yearly tribute to him in 1446-1447. John Hunyadi broke into Wallachia in November 1447. The Byzantine historian Michael Critobulus wrote that Vlad and Radu fled to the Ottoman Empire, which suggests that the Sultan had allowed them to return to Wallachia after their father paid homage to him. Vlad Dracul and his eldest son Misha were murdered. Hunyadi made Vladislav II the ruler of Wallachia. First Rule Upon the death of his father and elder brother Vlad became a potential claimant to Wallachia. Vladislav I of Wallachia accompanied John Hunyadi, who launched a campaign against the Ottoman Empire in September 1448. Taking advantage of his opponent's absence Vlad broke into Wallachia, at the head of an Ottoman army in early October. He had to accept that the Ottomans had captured the fortress of Jiriau on the Danube and strengthened it, the Ottomans annihilated Hunyadi's army in the Battle of Kosovo between 17 and 18 October. Hunyadi's deputy Nicholas Vizanai urged Vlad to come to meet him in Transylvania. But Vlad refused him. Vladislavii returned to Wallachia at the head of the remnants of his army. Vlad was forced to flee to the Ottoman Empire before 7 December 1448. In exile Vlad first settled in Adin in the Ottoman Empire after his fall. Before long he moved to Moldavia where Bogdani had mounted the throne, with John Hunyadi's support in the autumn of 1449. 
after Bogdan was murdered by Peter III Aaron in October 1451 Bogdan's son Stephen fled to Transylvania with Vlad to seek assistance from Hunyadi. However Hunyadi concluded a three-year truce with the Ottoman Empire on 20 November 1451 acknowledging the Wallachian boyars' right to elect the successor of Vladislav I if he died. Vlad allegedly wanted to settle in Brasov, but Hunyadi forbade the burghers to give shelter to him on 6 February 1452. Vlad returned to Moldavia where Alexander had dethroned Peter Aaron, the events of his life. During the years that followed are unknown. He must have returned to Hungary before 3 July 1456, because on that day Hunyadi informed the townspeople of Brasov that he had tasked Vlad with the defense of the Transylvanian border. Consolidation The circumstances and the date of Vlad's return to Wallachia are uncertain. He invaded Wallachia with Hungarian support either in April-July or in August 1456. Vladislav I died during the invasion. Vlad sent his first extant letter as voivode of Wallachia to the burghers of Brasov on 10 September. He promised to protect them in case of an Ottoman invasion of Transylvania, but he also sought their assistance if the Ottomans occupied Wallachia. In the same letter, he stated that when a man or a prince is strong and powerful he can make peace as he wants to. But when he is weak, a stronger one will come and do what he wants to him. Showing his authoritarian personality, multiple sources recorded that hundreds or thousands of people were executed at Vlad's order at the beginning of his reign. He began a purge against the boyars who had participated in the murder of his father an elder brother of whom he suspected of plotting against him. Chalko Condiles stated that Vlad quickly effected a great change and utterly revolutionized the affairs of Wallachia through granting the money, property and other goods of his victims to his retainers. The lists of the members of the princely council during Vlad's reign also show that only two of them were able to retain the positions between 1457 and 1461. Conflict with the Saxons Vlad sent the customary tribute to the Sultan. After John Hunyadi died on 11 August 1456, his elder son Ladislaus Hunyadi became the Captain General of Hungary. He accused Vlad of having no intention of remaining faithful to the King of Hungary in a letter to the burghers of Brasov, also ordering them to support Vladislaus's brother Dany against Vlad. The burghers of Sibiu supported another pretender, a priest of the Romanians who calls himself a prince's son. The latter took possession of Amlas, which had customarily been held by the rulers of Wallachia in Transylvania. Ladislaus V of Hungary had Ladislaus Hunyadi executed on 16 March 1457. Hunyadi's mother, Ertzi Sebe Seligi, and her brother Michael Seligi stirred up a rebellion against the king. Taking advantage of the civil war in Hungary, Vlad assisted Stephen, son of Bogdani of Moldavia, in his move to seize Moldavia in June 1457. Vlad also broke into Transylvania and plundered the villages around Brasov and Sibiu. The earliest German stories about Vlad recounted that he had carried men, women, children from a Saxon village to Wallachia and had them impaled. Since the Transylvanian Saxons remained loyal to the king, Vlad's attack against them strengthened the position of the Sulagius. Vlad's representatives participated in the peace negotiations between Michael Sulagi and the Saxons. According to their treaty the burghers of Brasov agreed that they would expel Dan from their town. Vlad promised that the merchants of Sibiu could freely buy and sell goods in Wallachia in exchange for the same treatment of the Wallachian merchants in Transylvania. Vlad referred to Michael Sulagi as his lord, an elder brother in a letter on 1 December 1457. 
Ladislaus Hunyadi's younger brother, Matthias Corvinus, was elected King of Hungary on 24 January 1458. He ordered the burghers of Sibiu to keep the peace with Vlad on 3 March. Vlad styled himself lord and ruler over all of Wallachia and the duchies of Amlas and Fagaras on 20 September 1459, showing that he had taken possession of both of these traditional Transylvanian fiefs of the rulers of Wallachia. Michael Silagy allowed the boyar Michael and other Wallachian boyars to settle in Transylvania in late March 1458. Before long Vlad had the boyar Michael killed. In May Vlad asked the burghers of Brasov to send craftsmen to Wallachia but his relationship with the Saxons deteriorated before the end of the year. According to a scholarly theory, the conflict emerged after Vlad forbade the Saxons to enter Wallachia forcing them to sell their goods to Wallachian merchants at compulsory board affairs. Vlad's protectionist tendencies aboard affairs are not documented. Instead, in 1476 Vlad emphasized that he had always promoted free trade during his reign. The Saxons confiscated the steel that a Wallachian merchant had bought in Brasov without repaying the price to him. In response Vlad ransacked and tortured some Saxon merchants according to a letter that Basar Ablyota wrote on 21 January 1459. Basarab had settled in Siashuara and laid claim to Wallachia. However, Matthias Corvinus supported Dany against Vlad. Dany stated that Vlad had Saxon merchants and their children impaled or burnt alive in Wallachia. Dan III broke into Wallachia, but Vlad defeated and executed him before 22 April 1460. Vlad invaded southern Transylvania and destroyed the suburbs of Brasov ordering the impalement of all men and women who had been captured. During the ensuing negotiations Vlad demanded the expulsion or punishment of all Wallachian refugees from Brasov. Peace had been restored before 26 July 1460, when Vlad addressed the burghers of Brasov as his brothers and friends. Vlad invaded the region around Amlas and Fagaras on 24 August to punish the local inhabitants who had supported Dany. Ottoman War Konstantin Mihailovich recorded that Vlad refused to pay homage to the Sultan in an unspecified year. The Renaissance historian Giovanni Maria degli Angioleli likewise wrote that Vlad had failed to pay tribute to the Sultan for three years. Both records suggest that Vlad ignored the suzerainty of the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II already in 1459 but both works were written decades after the events. Tursen Beg stated that Vlad only turned against the Ottoman Empire when the Sultan was away on the long expedition in Trebizond in 1461. According to Tursen Beg, Vlad started new negotiations with Matthias Corvinus but the Sultan was soon informed by his spies. Mehmed sent his envoy the Greek Katabalinos to Wallachia ordering Vlad to come to Constantinople. He also sent secret instructions to Hamza Bay of Nicopolis to capture Vlad after he crossed the Danube. Vlad found out the Sultan's deceit and trickery captured Hamza and Katabalinos and had them executed. After the execution of the Ottoman officials Vlad gave orders in fluent Turkish to the commander of the fortress of Jiriau to open the gates enabling the Wallachian soldiers to break in the fortress and capture it. He invaded the Ottoman Empire, devastating the villages along the Danube. He informed Matthias Corvinus about the military action in a letter on 11 February 1462. He stated that more than 23,884 Turks and Bulgarians had been killed at his order. During the campaign, he sought military assistance from Corvinus, declaring that he had broken the peace with the Sultan for the honor of the king and the Holy Crown of Hungary and for the preservation of Christianity. 
and the strengthening of the Catholic faith. The relationship between Moldavia and Wallachia had become tense by 1462 according to a letter of the Genoese governor of Caffa. Having learnt of Vlad's invasion Mehmed II raised an army of more than 150,000 strong. That was said to be second in size only to the one that occupied Constantinople in 1453. According to Chalko Condiles, the size of the army suggests that the Sultan wanted to occupy Wallachia according to a number of historians. On the other hand, Mehmed had granted Wallachia to Vlad's brother Radu before the invasion of Wallachia, showing that the Sultan's principal purpose was only the change of the ruler of Wallachia. The Ottoman fleet landed at Brela in May. The main Ottoman army crossed the Danube under the command of the Sultan. At Nicopoli on 4 June 1462, outnumbered by the enemy Vlad adopted the scorched earth policy, and retreated towards Targo Vista. During the night of 1617 June, Vlad broke into the Ottoman camp in an attempt to capture or kill the Sultan. Either the imprisonment or the death of the Sultan would have caused a panic among the Ottomans, which could have enabled Vlad to defeat the Ottoman army. However the Wallachians missed the court of the Sultan himself and attacked the tents of the viziers Mamut Pasha and Isaac. Having failed to attack the Sultan's camp Vlad and his retainers left the Ottoman camp. At dawn, Mehmed entered Targo Vista at the end of June. The town had been deserted, but the Ottomans were horrified to discover a forest of the impaled according to Chalk Condiles. Tursen Beg recorded that the Ottomans suffered from summer heat and thirst. During the campaign, the Sultan decided to retreat from Wallachia and march towards Brela. Stephany of Moldavia hurried to Chilia to seize the important fortress, where a Hungarian garrison had been placed. Vlad also departed for Chilia, but left behind a troop of 6,000 strong to try to hinder the march of the Sultan's army but the Ottomans defeated the Wallachians. Stephen of Moldavia was wounded during the siege of Chilia and returned to Moldavia before Vlad came to the fortress. The main Ottoman army left Wallachia but Vlad's brother Radu and his Ottoman troops stayed behind in the Baragan plain. Radu sent messengers to the Wallachians, reminding them that the Sultan could again invade their country. Although Vlad defeated Radu, and his Ottoman allies in two battles during the following months more. And more, Wallachians deserted to Radu. Vlad withdrew to the Carpathian Mountains, hoping that Matthias Corvinus would help him regain his throne. However Albert of Isenmazo, the deputy of the Count of the Secles, had recommended in mid-August that the Saxons recognize Radu. Radu also made an offer to the burghers of Brasov to confirm their commercial privileges, and pay them a compensation of 15,000 ducats. Imprisonment in Hungary Matthias Corvinus came to Transylvania in November 1462. The negotiations between Corvinus and Vlad lasted for weeks but Corvinus did not want to wage war against the Ottoman Empire. At the king's order his Czech mercenary commander John Giskra of Brandes captured Vlad near Rukka in Wallachia. To provide an explanation for Vlad's imprisonment, to Pope Pius II and the Venetians Corvinus presented three letters allegedly written by Vlad on 7 November 1462 to Mehmedi Mahmud Pasha and Stephen of Moldavia. According to the letters Vlad offered to join his forces with the Sultan's army against Hungary if the Sultan restored him to his throne. Most historians agree that the documents were forged to give grounds for Vlad's imprisonment. Corvinus court historian Antonio Bonfini admitted that the reason for Vlad's imprisonment was never clarified. Florescu writes, t. he style of writing the rhetoric of meek submission, clumsy wording and poor Latin, are all evidence that the letters could not be written on Vlad's order. He associates the author of the forgery with this Axon priest of Brasov. 
Vlad was first imprisoned, in the city of Belgrade according to chalk and Diles. Before long he was taken to Visegrad, where he was held for 14 years. No documents referring to Vlad between 1462 and 1475 have been preserved. In the summer of 1475 Stevenie of Moldavia sent his envoys to Matthias Corvinus asking him to send Vlad to Wallachia against Baser Ablyota, who had submitted himself to the Ottomans. Stephen wanted to secure Wallachia for a ruler who had been an enemy of the Ottoman Empire because the Wallachians were like the Turks to the Moldavians according to his letter. According to the Slavic stories about Vlad he was only released after he converted to Catholicism. Third Rule and Death Matthias Corvinus recognized Vlad as the lawful prince of Wallachia, but he did not provide him military assistance to regain his principality. Vlad settled in a house in Pest, when a group of soldiers broke into the house while pursuing a thief who had tried to hide there. Vlad had their commander executed, because they had not asked his permission before entering his home according to the Slavic stories about his life. Vlad moved to Transylvania in June 1475. He wanted to settle in Sibiu and sent his envoy to the town in early June to arrange a house for him. Mehmedi acknowledged Baser Ablyota as the lawful ruler of Wallachia. Corvinus ordered the burghers of Sibiu to give 200 golden florins to Vlad from the royal revenues on 21 September but Vlad left Transylvania for Buda in October. Vlad bought a house in Piercute CS that became known as Draculia Haza. In January 1476 John Pongrak of Dengaleg Voivode of Transylvania urged the people of Brasov to send to Vlad all those of his supporters who had settled in the town because Corvinus and Baser Ablyota had concluded a treaty. The relationship between the Transylvanian Saxons and Baser Ab remained tense and the Saxons gave shelter to Baser Ab's opponents. During the following months, Corvinus dispatched Vlad and the Serbian Vuk Grigurovic to fight against the Ottomans in Bosnia in early 1476. They captured Srebrenica and other fortresses in February and March 1476. Mehmed II broke into Moldavia and defeated Stevenie in the Battle of Valia Alba on 26 July 1476. Stephen Bathory and Vlad broke into Moldavia forcing the Sultan to lift the siege of the fortress at Targu Neamt in late August according to a letter of Matthias Corvinus. The contemporaneous Jakob Unrest added that Vuk Grigurovic and a member of the noble Jaksic family also participated in the struggle against the Ottomans in Moldavia. Matthias Corvinus ordered the Transylvanian Saxons to support Bathory's planned invasion of Wallachia on 6 September 1476, also informing them that Stephen of Moldavia would also break into Wallachia. Vlad stayed in Brasov and confirmed the commercial privileges of the local burghers in Wallachia on 7 October 1476. Bathory's forces captured Targo Vista on 8 November. Stephen of Moldavia, and Vlad ceremoniously confirmed their alliance and they occupied Bucharest forcing Baser Ablyota to seek refuge in the Ottoman Empire on 16 November. Vlad informed the merchants of Brasov about his victory urging them to come to Wallachia. He was crowned before 26 November. Baser Ablyota returned to Wallachia with Ottoman support and Vlad died fighting against them in late December 1476 or early January 1477. In a letter written on 10 January 1477, Stevenie of Moldavia related that Vlad's Moldavian retinue had also been massacred. According to Leonardo Botta the Milanese ambassador to Buda the Ottomans cut Vlad's corpse into pieces 
Bonfini wrote that Vlad's head was sent to Mehmedi. The place of his burial is unknown. According to popular tradition Vlad was buried in the monastery of Snagov. The excavations carried out by Dinu V. Rossetti in 1933 found no tomb below the supposed unmarked tombstone of Vlad in the monastery church. Rossetti reported, under the tombstone attributed to Vlad there was no tomb, only many bones and jaws of horses. Historian Konstantin Rezachovici said Vlad was most probably buried in the first church of the Komarna Monastery which had been established by Vlad and was near the battlefield where he was killed. Family Vlad had two wives according to modern specialists. His first wife may have been an illegitimate daughter of John Hunyadi according to historian Alexandru Simon. Vlad's second wife was Justina Siligi, who was a cousin of Matthias Corvinus. She was the widow of Vensel Pongrak of Sezent Miklos when Ladislaus Dragliu married her most probably in 1475. She survived Vlad Rakel and first married Palsuki than Janos Erdeli. Vlad's eldest son Minia was born in 1462. Vlad's unnamed second son was killed before 1486. Vlad's third son Vlad Draclia unsuccessfully laid claim to Wallachia around 1495. He was the forefather of the noble Dracaula family. First records Stories about Vlad's evil deeds began circulating during his lifetime. After his arrest, courtiers of Matthias Corvinus promoted their spread. The papal legate Niccolò Modriciens had already written about such stories to Pope Pius in 1462. Two years later, the Pope included them in his commentaries. The Meistersinger Michael Beheim wrote a lengthy poem about Vlad's deeds allegedly based on his conversation with a Catholic monk who had managed to escape from Vlad's prison. The poem called Von Einem Wotrich der Heistrakel Waida von der Wall a.k. was performed at the court of Frederick III Holy Roman Emperor in Wiener Neustadt during the winter of 1463. According to one of Bohem's stories Vlad had two monks impaled to assist them to go to heaven also ordering the impalement of their donkey, because it began braying after its master's death. Beheim also accused Vlad of duplicity, stating that Vlad had promised support to both Matthias Corvinus and Mehmedi, but did not fulfill the promise. In 1475 Gabriel Rangoni Bishop of Aga, understood that Vlad had been imprisoned because of his cruelty. Rangoni also recorded the rumor that while in prison Vlad caught rats to cut them up into pieces or stuck them on small pieces of wood because he was unable to forget his wickedness. Antonio Bonfini also recorded anecdotes about Vlad in his Historia Panonica around 1495. Bonfini wanted to justify both the removal and the restoration of Vlad by Matthias. He described Vlad as a man of unheard of cruelty and justice. Bonfini's stories about Vlad were repeated in Sebastian Munster's cosmography. Munster also recorded Vlad's reputation for tyrannical justice. German stories Works containing the stories about Vlad's cruelty were published in Low German in the Holy Roman Empire before 1480. The stories were allegedly written in the early 1460s, because they describe Vlad's campaign across the Danube in early 1462 but they do not refer to Mehmedi's invasion of Wallachia in June of the same year. They provide a detailed narration of the conflicts between Vlad and the Transylvanian Saxons, showing that they originated in the literary minds of the Saxons. The stories about Vlad's plundering raids in Transylvania were clearly based on an eyewitness account because they contain accurate details. They describe Vlad as a demented psychopath, a sadist, a gruesome murderer, a masochist worse than Caligula and Nero. However, 
The stories emphasizing Vlad's cruelty are to be treated with caution, because his brutal acts were very probably exaggerated by the Saxons. The invention of movable type printing contributed to the popularity of the stories about Vlad, making them one of the first bestsellers in Europe. To enhance sales, they were published in books with woodcuts on their title pages that depicted horrific scenes. For instance the editions published in Nuremberg in 1499, and in Strasbourg in 1500 depict Vlad dining at a table surrounded by dead or dying people on poles. Slavic stories There are more than 20 manuscripts which preserve the text of the Skazinio Dracul Voivode. The manuscripts were written in Russian but they copied a text that had originally been recorded in a South Slavic language. Because they contain expressions alien to the Russian language but used in South Slavic idioms. The original text was written in Buda between 1482 and 1486. The 19 anecdotes in the Skazini are longer than the German stories about Vlad. They are a mixture of fact and fiction according to historian Raymond T. McNally. Almost half of the anecdotes emphasize like the German stories Vlad's brutality. But they also underline that his cruelty enabled him to strengthen the central government in Wallachia. For instance, the Skazini writes of a golden cup that nobody dared to steal at a fountain because Vlad hated stealing so violently, that anybody who caused any evil or robbery, did not live long, thereby promoting public order, and the German story about Vlad's campaign against Ottoman territory underlined his cruel acts while the Skazini emphasized his successful diplomacy. On the other hand, the Skazini sharply criticized Vlad for his conversion to Catholicism attributing his death to this apostasy, some elements of the anecdotes were later added to Russian stories about Ivan the Terrible of Russia. National Hero The Cantacuzino Chronicle was the first Romanian historical work to record a tale about Vlad the Impaler narrating the impalement of the old boyars of Targo Vista for the murder of his brother, Dan. The chronicle added that Vlad forced the young boyars and their wives and children to build the Poinari Castle. The legend of the Poinari Castle was mentioned in 1747 by Neofiti Metropolitan of Ungro Wallachia, who complemented it with a story of Mesterel Manol who allegedly walled in his bride to prevent the trumbling down of the walls of the castle during the building project. In the early 20th century, Constantin Radulescu Coden, a teacher in Muskiel County, where the castle was situated, published a local legend about Vlad's letter of grant, written on rabbit skin for the villagers who had helped to him to escape from Poinari Castle to Transylvania during the Ottoman invasion of Wallachia. In other villages of the region, the donation is attributed to the legendary Radu Negru. Radulescu Coden recorded further local legends some of which are also known from the German and Slavic stories about Vlad suggesting that the latter stories preserved oral tradition. For instance the tales about the burning of the lazy, the poor and the lame at Vlad's order and the execution of the woman who had made her husband too short a shirt can also be found among the German and Slavic anecdotes. The peasants telling the tales knew that Vlad's sobriquet was connected to the frequent impalements during his reign but they said only such cruel acts could secure public order in Wallachia. Most Romanian artists have regarded Vlad as a just ruler, and a realistic tyrant who punished criminals and executed unpatriotic boyars. To strengthen the central government, Ion Budai Dilianu wrote the first Romanian epic poem focusing on him. Delana Siganyada presented Vlad as a hero fighting against the boyars Ottoman Strigoi, and other evil spirits at the head of an army of gypsies and angels. 
The poet Dimitri Barlant Ninu emphasized Vlad's triumphs in his battles with the Romanians in the middle of the 19th century. He regarded Vlad as a reformer whose acts of violence were necessary to prevent the despotism of the boyars. One of the greatest Romanian poets, Mihai Emanescu, dedicated a historic ballad the third letter to the valiant princes of Wallachia including Vlad. He urges Vlad to return from the grave and to annihilate the enemies of the Romanian nation. In the early 1860s the painter Theodore Aman depicted the meeting of Vlad and the Ottoman envoys, showing the envoys' fear of the Wallachian ruler. Since the middle of the 19th century, Romanian historians have treated Vlad as one of the greatest Romanian rulers emphasizing his fight for the independence of the Romanian lands. Even Vlad's acts of cruelty were often represented as rational acts serving national interest. Alexandru Dimitri Enifal was one of the first historians to emphasize that Vlad could only stop the internal fights of the Boyar parties through his acts of terror. Konstantin C. Jurescu remarks the torches and executions which Vlad ordered were not out of caprice but always had a reason, and very often a reason of state. Johann Bogdan was one of the few Romanian historians who did not accept this heroic image. In his work published in 1896 Vlad Eps and the German and Russian narratives, he concluded that the Romanians should be ashamed of Vlad instead of presenting him as a model of courage and patriotism. According to an opinion poll conducted in 1999, 4.1% of the participants chose Vlad the Impaler as one of the most important historical personalities who have influenced the destiny of the Romanians for the better. Vampire Mythology the stories about Vlad made him the best-known medieval ruler of the Romanian lands in Europe. However Bram Stoker's Dracula which was published in 1897 was the first book to make a connection between Dracula and vampirism. Stoker had his attention drawn to the blood-sucking vampires of Romanian folklore by Emily Gerard's article about Transylvanian superstitions. His limited knowledge about the medieval history of Wallachia came from William Wilkinson's book, published in 1820. Stoker apparently did not know much about Vlad the Impaler, certainly not enough for us to say that Vlad was the inspiration for Count Dracula according to Elizabeth Miller. For instance, Stoker wrote that Dracula had been of Sekli origin only because he knew about both Attila the Hun's destructive campaigns and the alleged Hunnic origin of the Seklis. Stoker's main source, Wilkinson who accepted the reliability of the German stories described Vlad as a wicked man. Actually Stoker's working papers for his book contain no references to the historical figure. Consequently Stoker borrowed the name and scraps of Marcellanus information about the history of Wallachia when writing his book about Count Dracula. Appearance and Representations Pope Pius II's legate Niccolò Modrosa painted the only extant description of Vlad, whom he had met in Buda. A copy of Vlad's portrait has been featured in the Monster Portrait Gallery in the Ambrose Castle at Innsbruck. The picture depicts a strong, cruel, and somehow tortured man with large, deep set dark green and penetrating eyes, according to Florescu. The color of Vlad's hair cannot be determined, because Modrosa mentions that Vlad was black haired while the portrait seems to show that he had fair hair. The picture depicts Vlad with a large lower lip. Vlad's bad reputation in the German-speaking territories can be detected in a number of Renaissance paintings. He was portrayed among the witnesses of St. Andrew's martyrdom in a 15th-century painting displayed in the Belvedere in Vienna. A figure similar to Vlad is one of the witnesses of Christ in the Calvary in a chapel of the street. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna Brought to you by Wikivd.com
Would you like to know more?